Uh, brief introduction of mine. Uh, I'm a founder and director of a company called Blue Infi. Uh, we operate from India. Uh, before starting this company, I was I work with NetSquare, Chase Bank, IBM, and Foundstone. My primary interest is web security research. Uh, I write a lot of papers uh, for security focus, O'Reilly, DevX, Inform IT, etc. I released several tools uh, which we are going to see today: uh, WS Scanner, ScanWeb 2.0, AppMap, AppCode Scan, WS Chess, etc. Uh, published some advisories on .NET and Java servers. Uh, I co-authored uh, some of the books called Web Hacking, Hacking Web Services, and one of the book which is going to release next month is Web 2.0 Security. Uh, today's agenda will start with uh, Web 2.0 overview and security concerns. Uh, then we'll look at Ajax security in detail, and then we'll look at web services in detail, since these two are the two critical components of Web 2.0 apps. Uh, some trends, 80% of companies are uh, investing in Web 2.0 services as a part of Web 2.0 initiative. This is like a recent McKinsey 2007 global survey. Uh, by the end of 2007, 30% of large companies will have some kind of a Web 2.0 business, a base business initiative up and running. Uh, this is Gartner's finding. And it is suggesting by 2008, web services or service-oriented architecture would surge ahead, which we are all seeing uh, uh, nowadays. Every new application is coming up with a Web 2.0 framework, or old applications like uh, Yahoo Mail, which is now migrating to a beta Web 2.0 base, Yahoo Mail, and such. Uh, so how Web 2.0 application would look like, uh, what you have is uh, your local application where you have your database uh, and authentication servers running over here, and you have a web services through which you are talking to the rest of the world over internet. Uh, your client-side application uh, running in browser, maybe running with Ajax, uh, maybe running with a rich internet application over a flash, or uh, the key components of these applications would be HTML, JavaScript, and DOM, which is interactive, get changed. Uh, interesting part is on the other side, where you have internet, which is connected to weather, news, documents, email, bank, trade, RSS feeds, blog, etc. So you are from your start page, pretty much you can access your emails, you can access your trading account, everything at a one page, and that is a front-end application. And interestingly, on top, your own application can be working as a web services and integrated into another's application as well. So what we are looking at over here is like uh, internet which defines network of networks. Now, Web 2.0 is something like application.
making entire application into web services which can be remotely invoked it is like a, a like a traditional rpc services but it is like a application based rpc services which we are seeing and then that piece is talking with database uh, looking at the web 2.0 security concerns, uh, complex architecture and confusion of technologies is, is creating some of the loopholes and impl uh, implementation level bugs. Uh, we have already seen some of the worms like uh, SAMI, Yaminer, Space Flash. This is attacking MySpace. This is some of the bugs attacking Yahoo. Uh, we have seen some of the bugs on uh, Google as well uh, as such. These all bugs are usually, if you look at this worm, they are, they are leveraging XHR uh, calls uh, to, to interact with, uh, with the application to the browser. Uh, AJAX and JavaScript client-side attacks on the rise. Uh, web services attacks and exploitations are going on. Uh, Flash clients running with a risk. You can decompile it, download, decompile, and such. Now we'll see some of the eject security attacks and defense. We'll cover some of the basics. We will cover some of the structures and streams. Uh, we'll see how you can fingerprint eject technologies. Uh, we'll see scanning and enumeration, uh, cross-site scripting, and CSRF with eject. So there are traditional XSS and CSRF. This is like XSS and, and CSRF with eject. Uh, and uh, we'll see some of the secure code base. Uh, AJAX is asynchronous JavaScript and XML. You have HTML, you have a CSS, you have a JS DOM. Then JS will make essentially XML HTTP request object. XHR is, this XHR object is essentially uh, uh, implemented in 2001 by Microsoft for their Outlook. And then in 2005, uh, Google suggests uh, has picked it up and all of a sudden it has become a big thing. But, uh, as, but XHR is lying there for 2001, so it's not a new technology as such. It is just the implementation of this uh, XHR is picking up around the world. Uh, XHR has capability like uh, from a traditional browser, you can't make a socket call.
there are various different frameworks out there like Atlas is for .NET framework, GWT, uh, Mochiki, Dojo, Prototype, etc. So what you can do is you can, before starting an application level assessment, uh, if you want to assess what kind of AJAX framework it is running with, you can use some of the tools. Uh, uh, there is a tool which I wrote. Uh, it's called AJAX fingerprinting tool, uh, which will, which has a, uh, some fingerprints for popular framework. Uh, so whatever your page you are assessing, you can compare which uh, framework it is running with. Uh, can help in assessment process, and even you can do a RIA fingerprinting as well if you are running with a Flash-based application uh, hosted on Leslo or such. Oops. Uh, AJAX uh, attack vectors, uh, entry point scanning and enumeration is first task. Then you look for a cross-site scripting attack, look for a cross-site request forgery attack. Uh, Client-side code reverse engineering uh, is another uh, possibility. Uh, Client-side code reverse engineering uh, by which you can identify the logic because in a traditional application, the whole business logic used to sit in an in a application layer running on a server side, but now a lot of, a lot of uh, business logic is shifting on AJAX side, so now you can browse through a JavaScript and identify loopholes. Uh, security control and val validation bypassing, which is used to happen in old application as well, on, as well as the 2.0 applications. Uh, local privacy information enumeration, if you are using a Dojo, uh, Dojo has an interface to uh, flash uh, local memory, so you can, you can read the variable. So Dojo is uh, writing something to this local memory. You can read the, these uh, memory variables as well. Uh, and there are, uh, there are some of the AJAX uh, frameworks which are running with a, ja with a vulnerability for JavaScript hijacking and such. So if you identify which, uh, which, uh, which uh, framework your application is running with, some of the tests you can do. How you do AJAX scanning? Uh, scan AJAX components, uh, uh, retrieve uh, all JavaScripts since uh, AJAX is residing in JavaScript. Uh, identify XHR call. You grab the grab the entire JavaScript file and look for XHR calls. Whether the this particular function or this file is making XHR call. Once you identify that, that you know that this particular file is something related with AJAX. Uh, mapping function to DOM events. So what I usually do is like uh, grab the XHR call and below that uh, whatever routines are implemented are usually uh, changing the DOM. Uh, so it will make uh, some changes, may, it may change the inner HTML or it may change some of the links or such. So what, then in the next step you can see what changes it is making. Uh, and then scan, scan code for, uh, look for these two high value target, that is a one is eval and uh, second is document.write because through these two calls uh, essentially uh, malicious content coming from a, from a server or malicious content coming from a third party stream can cause uh, XSS. Uh, AJAX serialization, AJAX processing, uh, processing various information coming through th third party. Over here, this is object coming, and for example, this function you see document dot write these dot subject. So, if someone has injected a JavaScript uh, in your subject uh, coming through a, your email, then wherever these call get executed will be a vulnerable to XSS. Uh, similarly, someone can inject stuff in a JSON array or a JS uh, a JS array as well. Uh, AJAX and JS manipulation, JavaScript exploitation, XSS, uh, identifying DOM, which we covered, eval, uh, attack APIs out there, beef, uh, uh, called something called beef, which uh, exploit the exploit the entire browser sessions, uh, and lot lot can be done uh, like a session hijacking and key loggers, as he said uh, in a previous presentation. Uh, so let's see some demos. Uh, okay, over here, uh, what I have is uh, uh, crawling. Okay, let's uh, so see the scanning. So over here, what I'm planning to do is, what I'm doing over here is I'm scanning the application. Uh, there is a toolkit called scanweb2.0, which you can find on my site, uh, where it is a set of Ruby scripts, which I have written through which you can scan web2.0 application pages. So first script is something called AJAX finger RB. Uh, so it is essentially for AJAX fingerprinting. Uh, so this is my target against which I am running uh, this script. Uh, so I say AJAX RB uh, run against uh, this framework. So here are the, some of the fingerprints for different uh, AJAX, uh, proto uh, AJAX frameworks and it has found that this particular page is running with a prototype.js framework. 
second is uh, you can, um, for example, your application is running with an Atlas framework uh, with a .NET. What you can do is uh, you can use this scan atlas.rb, which is going to scan your page, uh, try to identify Atlas framework, and from which it is going to get the reference of the backend web services, which Ajax is, uh, your uh, Ajax page is making backend call. So for example, you run this, uh, scan Atlas and this. Over here, what we got is uh, it has scanned for Atlas and it has found one entry point to the system, which is a trade.asmx page. Uh, so your page uh, in the front end is actually an Ajax application, which is making a backend call to a web services, which is called trade.asmx web services. Uh, next, uh, we are uh, scanning for flash. Uh, we are doing a flash finger, uh, and we are looking for a flash code, and then pass the flash code and uh, retrieve the critical information. Over here, what I've done is uh, scanning for flash object, and I got a parameter called search.lzx, which is converting SWF files. Uh, so you, if your application is running with a Leslo framework, which is another popular open source framework for web 2 application, it will identify.
a lot of thing a lot of vulnerability were discovered by by injecting on click or on mouse event where uh, one can inject the javascript uh, so for example if you look at this demo on uh, xss with rss stream here is a little vulnerable rss feed uh, widget uh, so you can pick uh, your feed which you already con you already configured so if you look at the feed uh, your feed is actually uh, coming through a proxy, the so proxy.aspx, there are three feeds coming to you. One is from CSCNN, one is from USA Today, and one is from example.com. So then you are selecting one of the feed. Okay. So you pick your feed. Uh, we have selected the feed, and in the feed, this is RSS feed. You can see the entire RSS feed over here. And someone has injected over here. Uh, you can see someone has injected link JavaScript alert XSS. At this point, any 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 arbitrary script can recite. Uh, as soon as someone click interesting news item, XSS will get executed. So you are you are taking these RSS feeds, which are totally uh, untrusted feeds coming from anywhere in the world, and it may cause a XSS if your RSS feed reader is vulnerable to these attacks. Uh, okay, let's move to presentation. Uh, AJAX crawling, crawling is the biggest challenge for AJAX. Crawling AJAX driven app, uh, a challenge, resource are hidden in a JavaScript, a uh, simpler scanner will fail. Uh, crawling should be with actual DOM context, automated crawling with a browser is required. Uh, so how we can do that? Uh, I usually crawl application using something called Wattir which is a Ruby interface to IE. So I can, I can drive IE uh, through Ruby interface. And then what I can do is like as soon as a DOM get loaded in, in my browser, I can, I can fry, fire all different click events programmatically and crawl entire site. So over here, if we go for uh, crawling with Wattir, uh, what we're going to do is there is a page which is just sending one large JavaScript. Uh, so we call that page and uh, through Wattir, uh, it has clicked each 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 of the links and made the entire uh, and collected all href. Here is a is a how Wattir script would look like. You are you are require Wattir, include Wattir, and then you are opening an instance of IE. Uh, you are telling IE to go to that particular site you want to crawl. Uh, so it will go grab entire uh, in in IE the entire JavaScript will 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 be loaded and you have uh, complete DOM get painted so now you have hrefs and everything you can look if you make a same call using a protocol level just open a netcat and make that call you are going to get just one JavaScript so you won't be able to do anything else because it is it, that particular JavaScript making it actual XHR call at the back end loading the uh, entire DOM once again. Uh, so I, the, I do IE show links, I will get the list of links, and then in next I say IE dot links to second number link, click that, collect link, third number link, collect that, and such. So this is the way programmatically I can control entire, entire uh, uh, browser. Uh, at the same time, you can add some smart checks. For example, I, what I do is like I look for on click, uh, and in, in on click, I look for whether it is making a JavaScript call or not. So that way, uh, I have a two kind of links. One is a static links, and other is a JavaScript driven link. Whichever is a JavaScript driven link, I click that. If it is a static link, I just grab that. So this is on AJAX crawling. Uh, uh, defending AJAX, uh, no business logic information on client side. Do not trust third party source coming to you. Uh, no direct cross domain callback. Uh, try to avoid uh, this cross domain callback uh, if you are a developer. Uh, filtering at a browser level before processing information. Avoid client side validations. Uh, no secret in AJAX calls. Proper data structure selection uh, based on whichever framework you are using. Avoid client side validation. Secure client side calls like eval. Uh, document write, HTML tag filtering before serving. Uh, quickly, we'll look at the JavaScript uh, uh, Web 2.0 based uh, JavaScript hijacking or CSRF with uh, Web 2.0. Uh, what we have over here is if if you if you are streaming, for example, you are making a request, get request, and streaming. Uh, I would say say J uh, say JavaScript array uh, to you. Uh, what what one can do is what uh, it can make an arbitrary request using JavaScript SRC. So I'm making a cross domain request here. Uh, since script is through which I can make a cross domain request because it is not uh, a byte to SOP. 
so once I make that request, what I'm do doing over here is I'm using a, I know that that script is actually sending me, just a minute. Uh, I know that that particular script is going to send me uh, uh, the information which is coming from the Aptitude application is actually array. So what I've done over here is I overloaded the function array uh, in, in my browser. So as soon as I hit the, hit the entire array, I load it into this, this function and then I can pass the entire information which I collected to my site, which is a get.collect.aspx data data true. So over here you can see the entire information has been has been sent from, so I collected array information coming from your target uh, domain, which is you already logged in, you have sent the, uh, send your, since I'm using a script tag, it'll replay the cookie, I will get the entire stream coming to me, and then I reshuffle the information coming to me, uh, to my site. So this is uh, some of the dangers of uh, using JSON and uh, GSRA. So pe what people are usually doing is, uh, if you are sending JSON, just wrap JSON to say slash or some other character. So they, by default, they cannot be loaded. And your application know that whenever JSON array comes, just just remove the forward and a backward trails or whatever.
cheesy fetching through uh, at last we have seen so there is nothing new here uh, we can go to the slides which one is this? okay uh, moving to secondary discovery what we have is searching UDDI which we have already covered where you can search UDDI with a business services and T model this is like a complex uh, structures for it uh, running queries against search engines like Google MSN you can use in URL and file type look for ASMX uh, there is a tool which I have written called WS scanner uh, which you can download where it is doing for example footprinting what I'm doing over here is I'm just you have to pass the Google API over here and then you have to pass amazon.com for example you are looking for web services running on amazon.com so it will take a permutation and combination of all different uh, queries and look for amazon web services so over here amazon is running with these five web services on their domain similarly if you go for microsoft.com domain uh, microsoft is running with 110 web services which you can see and on top you can do a pattern matching where you are looking for say I want I want a web services running with something related with Amazon so you can do a pattern matching uh, and run the services and you get a list of uh, web services running with Amazon name uh, so this is on uh, footprinting uh, once you have footprint, foot, foot, footprint and discovery of a ASMX file, you can call WSDL file. It is like an interface language file, IDL file uh, for RPC stubs. It, this is a, a web, web services stubs. So you have a scanning WSDL, looking for methods, collecting input, output parameters, security implementation, look for binding point, uh, map method signature, and then pretty much you can hack or you can assess your uh, web services. Uh, scanning strategies are manual invocation and response analysis, dynamic proxy creation. There are a lot of different tools out there by which you can create a dynamic proxy and then pro you can integrate that proxy into your code. So whether, for example, WSDL.exe comes with uh, .NET framework which you can use and that, that will create a C Sharp or a VB code uh, for you so you don't have to worry about. There is an abstraction layer code. Uh, auto auditing for various vectors, uh, fuzzing, XML or JSON fuzzing you can do. Uh, key part is a response analysis. Once you make a SOAP call, uh, what you are looking for, look for a fault code or a fault string because that is where a 500 internal error and a five, uh, fault code and fault string. Uh, okay, next. Okay, we don't have much time now. Uh, Okay, over here, for example, uh, I'm doing a web services vulnerability, uh, so I want to do a parameter tempering. Uh, or, oh, wait a minute, before that, uh, I'm profiling and invoking the proxy. So for example, this is an application where I found an access point uh, for a web services. So I go take the WSDL file,
extent to version I have put in a name and then a value is, is in remaining part. So when someone come to this site, uh, this page it will generate a XML stream back to the target site and it will cause a CSRF over XML. So this is the way like it has actually hit the site, uh, it has constructed the XML stream and we got an order is placed uh, from completely different domain which is separate from our trading domain. So this is the way various different things can happen. And finally we'll move to uh, code analysis, how you can analyze your code, uh, your web services code for vulnerability, uh, scan the code base, identify linkages, method signatures and put, look for various patterns for SQL, LDAP, XPath, file access, uh, checking on the validation and code walking through tracing. This is a very interesting feature which you can uh, use. So for example, over here I have a app code scan application uh, which is capable of scanning, uh, which is capable of uh, scanning entire source code. So what I've done is I'm, I'm passing uh, over here I am sending, uh, saying that I want to scan ASMX files which is a, which is a web services files. Uh, so I want to scan those files and then I select my code base which is uh, WS folder and then I am selecting the rules. Over here, these are the rules which I'm uh, using, say web method, slash n, slash n. So what I'm doing is I'm grapping the web method, which is actually the uh, web method is uh, essentially a web services method. And then I'm, from a web services method, I'm taking two or three line below. So from that, I get the signature of the function method. Uh, if a web method is session enabled, then I'm grabbing that. If it is a public, all public function from the file which I'm getting, I'm looking for a file stream and I'm looking for SQL command and select query if it is running on that particular page. So if I run this uh, over here, I get all the signatures. So yeah, I got a public signature, I got this. These are the command. And now I can, what I can do is the interested uh, variable which I am interested in, for example, FS is the variable which I am interested in. I can trace the variable using this walk functionality. So what you can do is you can walk that function in, in, in multiple files. So you get the complete trace of your variable from where it is started and from where it is hitting. So you grab the variable which is coming in a public uh, function because you know that public function is actually grabbing HTTP uh, request parameter and then trace the variable and if it is hitting to your database or it is it hitting to your file system then that's the vulnerable part. Uh, so that is it and content filtering, uh, regular firewall will not work, client filtering HTTP will not work, uh, you need a SOAP level filtering, uh, ISAP level filtering is essential, uh, SOAP content filtering through HTTP module. Uh, so over here if you write a simple IHTTP module and plug into your application, HTTP run application will come, your IHTTP module will hit first before it actually hit to your web application. So you have a web application firewall which is actually for a SOAP. Uh, and there is a there is a tool which is called Web2Wall, which is essentially a tool for 